gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I want to show you how to solo Wingspan, which is designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and published by Stonemeyer Games. In this game, we are all trying to attract the most wonderful assortment of birds to our aviary, so we are going to be playing against an Altoma player who will give us a run for our money. All right, so here we are, and we are all set up to start our game of Wingspan. We have a draw deck. We set out three face-up bird cards. So this is the deck we're gonna be drawing birds from for the entire game. We have our feeder, which actually is an adorable birdhouse dice tower, although you can't see it from this angle, with our starting food dice rolled in it. We have our bonus track, which is going to determine scoring. We're gonna come back to that in a moment. The Automa cards, our starting food supply, and our cubes and the Automa's cubes. So we are gonna be purple, and the Automa is going to be yellow. So the first thing we get to do is we get to draw five bird cards. We're going to look at them in a moment, but the next thing that we're going to do is draw goal cards. A goal card for the Otoma, and then two for us, and we get to pick one in consultation with our opening hand, which is very helpful. Alright, so let's see what the Otoma gets. Prairie Manager, birds that can only live in the grasslands. Okay, so that is a perfectly reasonable um, goal for the Automa. So they will have this over here as their special scoring goal. So just for reference, if you draw an Automa goal and they get breeding manager, backyard birder, or anything that doesn't have a percentage on it, then you should just discard that or shuffle it back in and then draw a different one because that one doesn't work for the Automa. So now we're gonna get to draw two of these and see what we get. So we got anatomist, birds with body parts in their names. Fun. And platform builder, which is birds that have platform nests. So we get to decide which of these we would like to keep. So let's have a look at our opening hand and see if there's any hints in there for us. All right, so we have a blue winged warbler, which would go with anatomist. Kill deer, I don't think a deer is a body part. That's no body parts. Uh, Wilson Snipe, again, not a body part. Purple Gallinule, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, they have a platform nest. All right, so we have sort of like a mixed hand coming up. One thing that we do know also is that their 31% of the cards have platform building on them. Only 22% of the cards have anatomical parts on them. So I also have to decide how I think that I should strategize with that. You know what? Anatomous sounds more fun. We're taking that one just because we can. So that was my choice. So this will just kind of get shuffled back in, put it on the bottom. Now I have to build my opening hand. So I start with five bird cards. I also start with five food. And basically the tension in your opening choices is I have to discard a food for every bird card I keep. So I don't want to keep all of these or else I'll have no food. I don't want to keep so few of them that I can't get started either. So let's think about what the best choice might be. All right, here's what we're going to do. We are going to go ahead and keep, let's keep the purple Gallinule because he doesn't share food with this blue wing and warbler that we definitely want to keep because the anatomist and we're going to keep the blue wing and warbler. That's what we're going to do. It's not the easiest starter set in terms of food, but we have to only discard, we only have to discard, we get to keep three food. We only have to discard two. So the warbler is going to need two worms. We only have one right now. The purple gallinol is going to need two and then one of something else. So what we may do is actually end up spending all three food on this purple gallinol. So we are going to we're going to talk about this more in depth, but basically when you place a bird out, you do have to pay the food cost. So this is a worm plus a worm. So we need two, I think technically it's invertebrate, but we're going to use the classless version of these things. And then for the purple gallon, you have this wheat symbol, a berry and see this thing that looks like the apple beach ball wheel. That means that the bird can also take a food of any type. So one seed, one berry, one food of any type will be enough to put this one out. So we have our opening hand, we have our opening food, 
And now we actually get to start. One of the things that's very interesting about this game is that I get eight actions the first round, but after every action, we're gonna be leaving uh, action tokens over here and we will have fewer things to do each round so the game accelerates as it goes by. In a game of wingspan, we're supposed to try to get the most victory points. So victory points are determined by a couple of things that we should start thinking about right from the beginning. The first is the point value in the bird cards. So these little numbers that are next to the feather on each bird card, those are point values. So right now the birds in my hand are worth quite a few points if I can get them out. You get a point for each egg that's on the board. Uh, you get a point for meeting your goals or any other goals you may pick up along the way. You're not just stuck with that first goal card. The other option for scoring points is to win over here on the round bonus tracker. So we recommend that you use the green side for the Otoma, uh, but there is another scoring track in the back that's a little friendlier. But in this case, whoever gets first place for these bonuses in the round will get more points, second place will get fewer, and then third and so on. But for this game, in round one, we're gonna be looking for the most eggs in water habitats down here, as you can see the water symbols. In round two, we're going to be looking for the most birds in um, these grassland habitats. And in round three, we're looking for total birds. And in round four, we're going to be looking for eggs in these little cup nests. So the Otoma, we don't actually have to do much accounting for. As I show you the Otoma cards, you'll see what I mean. Um, it will have its own automated way of determining how it does at the end of the round. We do our best the normal way. All right, so we're gonna get to go first. We are the first player, the, auto, the Otomo goes second. So we have four choices every single round. One of the deceptively simple things about this game is you don't have that much that you can do in any one round, but it's the accumulation of what you do over those rounds that matters. Option one is always play a bird. This little panel, this little row up here is gonna tell you about the cost of playing a bird. So basically for a food cost and no eggs, I can place a bird in any of these spaces and you place right left to right so I can't just like put a bird over here right now so for nothing I can put birds here for one egg I can start putting birds in one of these rows one egg two eggs two eggs and where you place your bird cards matters because when you start to take these other actions gain food lay eggs draw bird cards you start your action on the furthest little box to the right that is uncovered by a bird card. And then you move back along the row all the way back to the beginning and activate any bird powers that might be there. For example, this bird, which I will hopefully be putting out this round, has a brown power on him that when activated, all players draw one card from the deck. So once my bird is here, then I use this space to take a card draw action instead of this one. And the spaces improve as the game goes by. So the more bird cards are out in a given habitat, the better your actions are. So other than play a bird, our options are gain food, where we gain food off of dice from the bird feeder. You are limited by the dice that are showing. However, if only one type of food is showing on the die faces, you are allowed to reroll. It does count if there's only one die left. So if you don't like what's in the pool, you can manipulate it a little bit to at least get a reroll. You can lay eggs. So eggs are used to power other actions, including putting out bird cards. They're also worth points at the end. So having a lot of egg laying power is a good thing. And this is where you draw bird cards. So if you want a card, play down here. So I think for my first action, even though I'd really like to play this blue wing warbler, I want to put the purple gallinule out first. So I am going to go ahead and play a bird with my action. As you can see, this little buddy right here is worth three food as we discussed. So I need to pay one wheat, one berry, and one anything. I have exactly three food in my supply. So I'm gonna put him down and I'm gonna pay this food. And that means I'm gonna need to get some more food before I can put another bird card out. So that was my entire action. I played a bird. That was it. So now it's going to be the Otoma's turn and I'm gonna talk you through how that works. The way the Otoma works in this game is you have an Otoma deck and we're gonna flip cards and we are going to do the action that the round card, the round is pointing to. So all the cards have like a nice little, actually I'll show you off of this one card. So this is the Automobond card. It's the one that makes it extra difficult. I didn't shuffle it in this time. The Automobond Society will also have round one, round two, round three, and round four instructions for you to follow. 
all the cards are structured like this, except that they just have different actions on them. So when you flip one, you, for example, we're in round one, we'll line up with the round one action, and then we'll do that for the Otoma on their turn. And then we take cards out to mimic leaving uh, action cubes on the scoring board. There are also cards that are going to show you how the Otoma can be expected to do on certain round bonuses. So we know that in terms of eggs and different habitats, the Otoma automatically starts with a base value of one and it will gain or lose depending on what it plays throughout the round. All right, so let's flip the very first Otoma card and see what the Otoma will do. All right, so in round one, it has a card here. So let's see what that exactly means. There's a very helpful reference card for what the Atoma can do. In this case, we're gonna discard all three bird cards from the bird tray. The Atoma draws one and keeps it face down. We're gonna play, be playing a normal difficulty. So all the cards that the Atoma keeps are worth four points. On easy, they can be worth three. On hard, they're worth five. But basically, the Atoma is gonna clear out our draw row here, which is annoying because there was a card I actually did want. And then it's gonna draw one card from the deck and that's its whole turn. So it's gonna clear these out. These will go into discard. It takes one from the top of the deck and just keeps it. So we'll just put that little Otoma pile and then we put three new cards out. So here we have a Blue Jay, we have an American Woodcock, and a Clark's Nutcracker. So to show off my newly placed bird, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and draw some cards of my own. So I'm gonna come down to this space. I get to draw one card. If I had eggs, I could optionally pay an egg to draw an extra card, which is why it's a better action than just one card straight up. I don't have that, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and draw a card. Ooh, yes, a red-headed woodpecker. Perfect, because I have another bird with an anatomical name in its bird name. So we got another card. We're gonna come here, and we're gonna get to activate a brown power. When activated, all players draw one card from the deck. So the Atoma, according to the rules, does not get to benefit from my brown powers. So I get a free card draw that it doesn't, ha. So I've gotten a Northern Shoveler, I find it hilarious, by the way, the Latin name for this is a spatula clupeata, because yeah, I guess that's about accurate. So I've got a couple more birds to choose from. One thing that's a little concerning for me with this hand right now, however, is that most of them are worth a pretty good number of points. Not so much the red-headed woodpecker, but it's gonna work towards my bonus. But they are kind of complicated in terms of the food that they require. So I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time acquiring food, which is a little bit concerning for me. One thing that's particularly exciting, however, is that whenever I activate the red-headed woodpecker, I can gain a seed food from the bird feeder if it's available and cash it on this card. Caching is great because every food that you place on a bird card that way isn't a food that you can spend to, you know, put other birds out, but it's worth one point for each cash food on a card at the end of the game. So it's another way to score. And now my turn is complete. Let's see what the Otomo wants to do. Let's move it like this. Makes more sense. Okay, so this time, the Atoma is going to place a bird. So what that means is that we are gonna take any cards from here that match the Atoma's bonus, and we'll keep the one that has the highest point value, and it'll get to, it'll get to actually keep it for that point value. However, um, it's got Prairie Manager, so birds that can only live in grasslands. That does not apply to the American Woodcock, which can live in two different habitats. This one's a woods bird, and that one also lives in the woods. So because none of these cards match, what the Otoma will do is it will take one card face down and add that to its card collection. So that was its entire action. As you can see, the Otoma cards are very straightforward, which is something I very much like. All right, well, I'm in a situation where I really need some food. I do not have a stellar opening set of birds to deal with. So let's come here. What this means is we can take any food die out of the supply. What I'm gonna go ahead and do I like this redheaded woodpecker. I'm gonna go ahead and take this die out and take a worm for it. So that is my current plan. So now I've got this worm. I still don't have enough food to put any birds out, but I'm on the way. And then we'll come back over here. And that was my action. Now the Atoma gets to go again. Now it's going to lay one egg. 
So here are the eggs, just, you know, they're fun colors. The colors don't matter. They're just for aesthetic fun. So we have one egg over here now on the Atomus side. So that means that it just gained a point and it'll just gain eggs throughout the game. All right, so I'm gonna get some more food. You know, this time, this is tough. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this wheat, the seed, because I'm not sure what bird I wanna put out next, but the Northern Shoveler actually has the best power in terms of getting lots of cards. So I could put another card here and start having this really crazy card draw option. Also, if I can get more birds over here in this water habitat, I can lay eggs on them and try to do some end of round scoring. So that may be my plan, I think. So that was that whole action. The Atoma is gonna come here and it's going to do another attempt at getting birds that meet its requirements. It's not going to get them because it needs something that can only live in a prairie habitat. So it's gonna take this card and put it in its supply. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that opportunity to take another food. So this time I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take it as a seed. We'll come here and that's all done. The Otoma will clear off all of these cards. It will draw, it will take one for its supply of bird cards that will score at the end. And we're gonna lay out some new cards. Oh, Northern Cardinal, it's so pretty. All right, so what will happen here is see this round one that adds a cube? We're gonna take a cube from the Atoma and we're gonna put it up here on this row. So basically the Atoma had a base value of one, now it's got the equivalent of two eggs in um, water habitats. So if we're gonna try to catch up, we gotta get some eggs out. In fact, let's go ahead and grab some. So we're gonna come to this action right here, which is gonna allow us to grab two eggs from the supply. So I'll take a blue one and a pink one. You can put them on any bird that has space available. So for example, this one, see it has four little egg signs on it. So that means it can hold up to four eggs. So that was our action. We've laid a couple of eggs. What will the Atoma do? The Atoma is gonna take food. So when the Atoma takes food, it is going to have a certain priority. So this time it's gonna prioritize rodents, fish, berries, dual face dice, worms, and seeds. So the only die face option it has is berries. That's going to be a reroll. So if all dice show the same face, you reroll them all and then you follow the key. So we're gonna go through their action. It also lets you activate all pink powers here. So I've shown you birds with brown power so far. Some birds have pink powers that activate on other players' turns. So the Atoma has it built in so that you as a player can still benefit from those powers even though there are technically no other players in the game. So because we have two berries here, the Atoma is gonna take the option to reroll all five dice. And now it's going to follow its own priorities. So it is going to take this fish. Also, when the Atoma takes food out of the supply, it takes everything with the same face. So if there had been multiple fish, it would have taken multiple fish. All right, it's my turn again. We're gonna come here, this. I wanna put out a bird. So we are gonna put this food back in the supply. We are going to place this Northern Shoveler and we're gonna pay one egg for doing so because the cost of this space is one egg. So we've paid our food, we've paid our egg, and now we have another bird out in this water habitat. The Atoma. Oh, it said round one only card. So it's after the food again. So in this case, again, it's rodent, fish, berry. That's its first priority that we see that's actually in the supply. So it's gonna take both of the berry dice out and it's going to add a cube to the scoring track. And that's what it will do. It's our last turn of the round. So I think what we will do is let's go ahead and fight it for some eggs. So let's put a cube out, grab two eggs. And that was our action. Now the Atoma gets its last action of the round. So it's going to gain an actual egg but it's going to remove a cube from the round marker. So that means that actually we are gonna get that bonus, which I'll show you right now. 
So all of my cubes are gone and the Atoma has gone eight times. That means that this round is over. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna do end of round scoring. So in this case, we're gonna get a bonus at, for most eggs in water habitats. I have three. The Atoma had a starting value of one, plus it had this one more cube on the round marker. So what that means is that I actually got first place for that. So I will get four points and the Atoma will get one at the end of the game because we actually beat it for once. Then I clear all these cubes off of the board for use in the next round. The Atoma, what we're gonna do, see how this card said remove after round one? We take this card out and then we're gonna reshuffle the cards that are left for another round. We are also going to flip this card so that round two is facing up and we're gonna be matching the round two actions for this turn. And that, gamers, is a sample round of Wingspan. I hope this is giving you a good idea of what the Atoma can do and of how the game flows. And I hope that you're looking forward to the game. And if you've enjoyed my work, please like and subscribe. Happy gaming!